Well, I've had personally the painful privilege of witnessing the poverty, the trauma, the displacement due to uh, suffered by local communities in Damascus, Sinaia, Tekia, Malula, Homs and Aleppo, visited several times, and I continue to seek to raise the suffering of the people in Parliament. Just as a reminder, over 9 million Syrians are food insecure at the moment, an estimated 9 out of 10 live below the poverty line, and over 11 million Syrians are in need of sharing the system. I raise this frequently in Parliament and the suffering of the people. And in January this year, I sent a letter to the British Prime Minister Boris Johnson to urge the lifting of economic sanctions against Syria. The letter was signed by 80 other people, including many colleagues in the House of Lords, um, two former uh, British ambassadors to Syria, including one of them, my friend Peter Ford, and other people from different arenas. Lord Dannett, the former Chief of General Staff of the British Army, Lord West of Spithead, formerly First Sea Lord and Chief of Naval Staff, and someone you heard earlier, of course, the Right Reverend Dr. Rowan Williams, the former Archbishop of Canterbury, and many other people. It was also signed by international diplomats, human rights experts, and some of the most senior church leaders in the Middle East. Very briefly, our letter to the Prime Minister followed calls from the United Nations Special Rapporteur on unilateral coercive measures, Professor Elena Duan, who appealed at the end of December for the United States to lift its complex web of economic sanctions that severely harm the people of Syria. Sanctions that have not been approved by the UN Security Council. The Special Rapporteur stated that US sanctions, I quote, violate the human rights of the Syrian people and also, quote, exacerbate the already dire humanitarian situation in Syria, uh, the, uh, especially no. in the course of COVID-19 pandemic, end of quote. They suffer, or they cause suffering by blocking the aid, trade and investment necessary for Syria's health system and economy to function. And the Special Rapporteur's findings reflect a growing consensus within humanitarian aid and human rights communities that the sanctions are driving Syria into an unprecedented humanitarian catastrophe. I could give a lot more details, you've had a lot already, and I know I'm speaking out of turn because of our network connections. But I would just highlight that sanctions kill just as surely as bombs do. But while bombs can be aimed at military targets, and sometimes, unfortunately, at civilian targets, under sanction regimes, nearly everyone suffers in Syria. The effects have been devastating. Millions of people out of work, skyrocketing prices and poverty, a crippled healthcare system, and hunger and death for many of the most vulnerable. It is high time the undeclared economic war being, being waged against the Syrian people by the United States, the United Kingdom, the European Union, and their allies to come to an end. And I hope very much that this very important conference will help to bring that around. So moving from there to my... Sorry. Moving from there, sorry, I didn't stop in a moment. I move to what I'm sure you do, which is to have the great privilege of giving a vote of thanks. So I'd just like to offer a very profound vote of thanks to all the distinguished people who participated in this very, very important conference. We've been so fortunate to work with speakers from Syria, from the front line of faith and freedom, and other experts from around the world. And most importantly, to hear voices say from in country, which we don't hear enough of in Britain, and to hear and the heartbreaking realities that exist in Syria today and to hear the truths that are so often hidden in mainstream narratives. And if you have to listen to the BBC like I do, um, I've complained again and again. Andrew Ashdown, an Anglican priest, the, uh, the who has been uh, of the um, coverage of Syria uh, related to other areas in the region. So a huge thank you to those who, in the face of pressure not to do so, I know many people have a lot of pressure not to take part in such a conference, they've had the courage to speak out and may well pay a high price for it. But we're here because we believe. We believe in the truth. We believe in the need to alleviate the suffering of the people of Syria. Since the Syrian crisis began 10 years ago today, the suffering of the Syrian people has gone on, as we all know, it's all why we're here, for far too long. And the current policies of the international community are only prolonging violence and instability in the country and compounding the profound suffering of millions of people, innocent people. 
So I passionately hope that the voices today will promote an, a path to stability and peace. And finally, of course, thank you so much, Dr. Macram and the European Centre for the Study of Extremist of extreme extremism. <laughs> and so I'm disorganized because I've been running around trying to get my network going and for organizing this very important event. But seriously, I'm sure we all hope and pray that what we have heard today echoes in the corridors of power and challenges the people to reflect on the too often unreported realities in this context. And as I say, there's very, very biased reporting which I'm sure we are all aware of and to support Syria to decide its own future and to rebuild your magnificent country with its wonderful history in a way that goes with the wishes of the Syrian people and to bring hope, peace and freedom for your people. You've suffered for far too long without it. You've deserved it for a long time. And I'm sure everyone who's taken part in this very, very important conference for which we do thank Dr. Macram very much for arranging, will agree that it is long overdue that the people of Syria are respected for your wonderful history, respected for your civilization, and respected for the contribution you can make to the world when countries such as the United States and my own country stop penalizing you and allow you to develop your own justice, peace, freedom, and democracy.